welcome back. My name is Addie Gannon of Well Loved Clothing, and today we are continuing episode number. Bleh, I was holding it too. <laughs> episode number three of Month of Thrift Flips. Don't forget all these pieces that you see today and from all of the other thrift flips from Month of Thrift Flips and a few from before are going to be launched July 15th for sale on my website, wellloveclothing.com. So you can shop your heart out come July 15th. I'm very excited because I chose another theme for this one. I've been seeing a lot of flips with this starting point. We are going to be thrift flipping button downs. There are endless possibilities with button downs, whether you're wearing them or whether you're thrift flipping them. So today is gonna get really fun. I have a giant pile that I have just been thrifting for a while. And they're just colors and prints, patterns, all kinds of fun stuff that I'm really excited to get to mess with today. Of course, most of them are orange, but we have a green one. <laughs> this is redemption right here, people. <laughs> So I have a lot of ideas and a lot of shirts, not sure which one is going to accomplish which, but I'm just gonna try them all on and see which one I think will be great for what design and we're just gonna go for it. So let's get started. start out with something a little more simple to just kind of get used to sewing with some button down. And so after trying all of them on, I think this green gingham button down will be perfect for what I'm gonna go after. It's just a button down. The befores are all gonna look pretty similar, except basically for color and pattern. So this one's very cute. It has that teeny tiny, I guess it's houndstooth more than gingham, light green check. And I love this going into spring and summer because we are going to go after this look. Just this little tank top, square neck, strap, so cute. These little tops are just quintessential summer to me. And the green check on this is gonna end up so adorable in this little square neck top. So we're gonna chop it, crop it, and just plain sew the heck out of this thing. So let's get started. Step one is laying this shirt as flat as possible and buttoning it all the way up so that we can cut a straight line across the front. And then realizing that we need to take the pocket off in order to do anything to this shirt. So seam ripping that off the front, laying it flat again, and then using another piece that is actually a jumpsuit from my own closet. I wanted that square neckline similar to this jumpsuit. So I'm using that as a pattern and laying it flat on top and then sketching the outside with about a half an inch of seam allowance. And then making the line across the top that's gonna be the square neck and ensuring that there's a little armpit triangle. Once I have all of that sketched onto my shirt, I'm leaving another half inch for even more seam allowance. I just like a lot of wiggle room when I'm making new things. Cutting that triangle around the armpit and then straight across the top and there we have our shirt. I laid it flat and measured the armpit to hem seam just to make sure that it was the same length and it was actually a little longer on one of them and so I was cutting off just the excess fabric. Then I mutilated the sleeves on this thing to make the facing for the neckline. I cut one inch strip long enough for the long piece across the top and the two little armpit corners and cut those out, laid them flat on top and sewed front to front for the facing. I used my straightener again because I really loved the results that I got in the last video and I still don't have my iron. Oh my gosh. I am ironing this folded over to make the facing and then folding it an eighth of an inch from the edge in order to sew down the seams and not have it break. I am sewing that facing down one inch from the hem of the top and then repeating the same exact process to make the facing of the front by mutilating the sleeve and laying those pieces. Since the front was two separate pieces, I did have to make several different pieces of facing for the top. But once those were cut, I sewed the first seam and then went to my flat iron to iron down those pieces with the eighth inch hem. Sewed down the facing and voila, we have our little shell of a top. Next step is to sew the two sides together to make it an actual shirt. So I'm laying the front on top of the back and pinning down the sides and then sewing the side seams down. Then cutting off any excess fabric from that side seam that we just sewed because I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch to keep all those edges on the inside from fraying. So we're zigzag stitching right on the edge of that fabric. And the main portion of our shirt is done, so we can now move on to the straps, which of course we are going to destroy the rest of this shirt for. I then needed to find two sections where I had two strips of two inch fabric, lots of twos today, um, so that I could make these straps. I needed them to be two inches because I wanted my end goal to be one inch, and I have to fold them in half in order to sew a perfect strap. I am using the back of the shirt to make these two inch straps because I had plenty of fabric there, and so I measured out where it needed to go and cut a straight line all the way across the back to make my two two inch sections. I folded them in half inside out and then ironed them down to make them easier to sew, which I sewed one long seam all the way down the side 
about a quarter inch in to allow for some space on the edge. Once that seam was done, I cut off the excess and flipped them inside out using my loop tool, which worked so well this time, thank goodness. Took them back to my flat iron and ironed them folded in the middle so that the seam was on the inside. It just makes a very clean strap that way. Once I had it all ironed, I took it back to my shirt shell and pinned it down, matching the angle to the right angle of the strap. And I pinned them down and then measured them once I actually had the shirt on, seeing where I wanted it to hit. That measurement was 13 inches, and so I pinned correctly on the front of the shirt where the 13 inch mark was, and then I sewed it down and folded the edge so it wouldn't be frayed inside. Repeated that step with every section of the strap that attached the shirt. The only thing left to do is crop this adorable little shirt, and so I cut two inches below the button, and I wanted to make a facing without actually having to do a whole other strip of facing, and so I folded one inch from the bottom and then did an eighth inch fold, ironed both of those down and sewed it down and oh my gosh, it's done. <laughs> goodness this is so cute I didn't want to take off my little orange shirt on it thing but I'm kind of digging the styling of it with this layered look these tops are so perfect they just make any outfit so cute of the square neck and the green it just turned out so perfect and I am in love oh I'm so excited to see what else I can do with these button downs let's keep going <laughs> This next piece is where I think I'm gonna have a ton of fun with these button downs. I bought these two button downs in the most perfect colors. Oh, just this peachy color and this brown rust almost. They're the same brand, same style, and so they will work really well together. But you can see they're just oversized, tons of fabric, and that's all I really have to say about that because they're button downs. <laughs> so my plan for these babies is to go after this dual tone dress. I am in love with this style dress. So baby doll dresses are a huge deal right now, and I think they're so cute to just throw on with sneakers or like platform sandals something really summery and fun. But I think that these pieces will complement each other really well. Gather some of it, split them down the middle, mess with some of the fabric, and all in all create just an adorable baby doll style dress. So let's see what we can come up with. Starting out this little thrift flip with our trusty pin. So I am pinning where I want that first tier to end and then laying it completely flat so that my cuts are straight and buttoning it all the way up so that the fabric lays correctly. I'm using my measuring tape here to mark spots all the way across the shirt that match that same length of the pin so that my hem is straight all the way across. I already allowed for seam allowance when I pinned this shirt and so I'm cutting directly across and then laying it on my other shirt just to kind of get a feel for what this is going to look like in the end. Once I I decide how long I want that center tier to be. I am chopping off the top with the same technique of measuring and marking for a straight stitch. Before getting into gathering and making the actual tiered skirt, I wanted to take in this top a little bit just because it is quite large and I'm gonna need it to be smaller if I want there to be a cute puffy gather on the tiers. I'm starting at the armpit and sewing down about three inches in from where the hem used to be to suck in that hem and give it more of a shape. I repeated this process a couple of times until I was happy with the width that I had on this shirt. And then I wanted to put some darts down the back to give some cute detail, but to also make the shirt fit a little better. So I flipped it inside out, measured the whole hem, and split it into three ways so that my darts would be equal along the sides. To make the dart, I sewed starting at the bottom with a depth of about one inch, and then sewed to three quarters up the shirt where it just kind of fell off the shirt to make a dart. Took off the pocket from what we'll call the second tier, and then started base stitching my pieces so that I could gather these to make amazing tiers on this skirt. So this base stitch is is just a long stitch that I'm not double stitching the edges of so that I can pull that string and make them gather. Little tip, tie a knot on the end that you're not going to pull through because then you won't lose your string. In order to gather it equally across the whole skirt so it's not gathered in some places, kind of weird and not in others, I'm going to pin all of the side seams and the front seam and back 
to the top and then gathered the sections individually. It took me so long to figure out how to pin this button front down, but once I got it done, it went really quickly and we can gather. To gather this tier, I am just pulling one of the threads from that base stitch on the orange piece. And it's really all about just messing with this thread until you can get it to do exactly what you want it to do. So this was a very long base stitch. So I had to pull this stitch all the way around to the other side. So I had equal gathering throughout the whole skirt. This took a very long time, but it was so worth it. So once I finished doing all of my gathering on this tier, I pinned about every inch to keep the gather in place. Sewed my stitch across the same base stitch, but now that it's gathered, I was sewing the two pieces together. I realized after making the second tier, the orange one, that the orange shirt was actually bigger than the darker rust shirt so I had more fabric to gather so I had to cut off the sleeves of the orange shirt and add them to the bottom of the rust shirt to give it more fabric so that the third tier could be gathered too or else it would just look really weird straight no puffy straight. To do this I cut the side seam of the rust piece and then cut the sleeves open and cut off any of the excess pieces that would make that piece thicker and sewed them all together so it's like two pants on the sides of that bottom piece. I sewed them face to face and pinned them down, stitched them up, and I am loving this look. It makes this dress even cooler and even more dual tone funky. I also zigzag stitched all of those stitches that I just made to attach that fabric because I wanted the edges to not break. Once that was sewn down, I could now baste stitch the top of it. So I went ahead and did that long stitch all the way around the top tied my little knot and then pinned it to the top before realizing that I had no idea what a straight line was and I needed to cut off the bottom of the peachy shirt. So I chopped it off real quick and then pinned it right back up on the two side seams, the front and the back and got to gathering. With it all pinned up, I could gather the piece now. So I tugged all the way around, which this one was even bigger than the first piece that I did. So it took forever, but once I was done, I sewed over the top of that stitch with a regular straight stitch. Making sure to stay straight on that line of the stitch that was already made. And then all that was left was hemming it. And so I basically just chopped off the section that had hanging pieces that I didn't want in the skirt. Using my measuring tape to make sure that it was all the same length across the skirt and then I use the same facing technique to fold the eighth inch to and then folding the inch and then ironing it down and we're gonna talk about that a lot today and then sewing down that inch up hem to have a nice finished edge last but not least would it really be a well-loved flip if we did not make a puffy sleeve so I'm tossing this piece on to see where I want that sleeve to hit pinning it and then chopping off the edge of the sleeve we are double rolling to make a casing for elastic because that's just the easiest way to make a sleeve on a dress like this. So I made the casing about three quarters inch thick because my elastic is half an inch. I left a space in the seam for my elastic to go through. So I'm taking that with a safety pin and shoving it through that whole section and sewing the edges together with an X stitch to make sure that it stays put. Copied that same process on the other sleeve and then finished off the inside edges with a zigzag stitch. And oh my goodness, this might be my favorite thing ever. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm just gonna keep making weird sounds. <laughs> this one turned out better than expected, honestly. I expected a lot out of it, but this is even better. So I put these little side panels in it, like I said, because I didn't have enough fabric, but I'm kind of loving it. It adds like a little bit of an extra oomph to it. So it has a little more character than just being like a three-tone dress. And I love the tears, love keeping the collar and the puppy sleeve. Oh, it does not get any better than this right here. Our final piece for today is a little bit of a challenge, but I'm excited to do it. And I got a very large button down specifically for this reason, because we are going to be making this dress. Oh, I'm excited. I love a good pinafore, a little overall style kind of dress. Oh, cute. Over a t-shirt or a button down. And I got 
this amazing button down. It's a thicker fabric, so it'll hold really well. This deep, rich brown. It's nice and flowy. It has plenty of fabric, so we can accomplish that pinafore, but really, it's just the softest button down I have ever felt. So we are going after that little overall dress with this button down, and I am too excited. So let's do it. Alrighty, we're laying this gal flat, buttoning it up, and it actually doesn't have a top button because yay Goodwill thrifted pieces. So I had to pin that shut, and then I'm using the same jumpsuit from before because I still want a square neck, but it is going to be tweaked a little bit. So I'm laying that on top, and then marking my edges and leaving space for the seam allowance. I'm also leaving a little bit of space on the side because I'm gonna have to cut the armholes deeper. And since this is gonna be a dress, I'm just drawing a straight line down to the hem with a bit of an A-line shape. So once I have all of those pieces sketched, I can cut it out and I just went to town on this thing. Before I cut any of my actual lines, I cut off the sleeves and the neck just to make sure that my fabric was laying the way that a normal pattern would. And then I cut out the neckline and the drop armholes. And down that A-line side to make two separate pieces, the front and the back. Instead of making a facing, I was just gonna use the fabric that I had because I had some extra fabric on top. So I measured down an inch and an eighth of an inch and marked those so that I could get the correct hem length on these. Which I then took right back to my trusty flat iron for this whole stinking video and ironed down the eighth of an inch and then the inch and then sewed that down to make a beautiful line straight across the top. I used the same process of measuring, folding, ironing, and sewing for the back piece to create that same hem. I also needed to create a facing for the dropped armholes which is going to be a lot more difficult and so I am using the sleeve for the extra fabric because I do actually have to have a good thick piece of fabric to make this facing. So I'm cutting four two inch strips that I will then have to somehow figure out how to put a straight piece onto a curved piece. After quite a lot of messing with pins and messing with fabric and trying to figure it out, I finally got it pinned how I wanted it to. So I stitched all four of those pieces down to the front, then ironed them flat the opposite way so that we could create the facing. Did the eighth of an inch fold and the inch fold and here we are, a sewing this thing away and it was the most difficult thing to get this thing ironed and sewn down but we did it and I feel so accomplished. We can now move to actually putting this dress together and I'm so excited so I'm laying the front down flat facing upwards and then the back on top of that front to front and attaching them all the way down the side so I'm pinning them and luckily since I measured them from the bottom of the shirt the hems match up perfectly. So I'm sewing that all the way down the sides and then also doing a zigzag stitch so we have a nice clean inside seam that won't fray and we can move on to the final step of straps so I'm making them the same way that I did before I'm cutting the sleeves and cutting two inch pieces sewing one seam all the way down the side and I'm also doing an angled stitch across the top because I have a really cute idea for this strap so I want it to be completely finished using my loop thingy hook once again to flip them inside out and then attaching them at the back where the points of the shoulders come in. Sewing those down and then for the front is where the fun part comes in. So I'm going to put buttonholes an inch in from the top corner. So I'm measuring exactly where those need to be so they match perfectly across the top. Marking the spacing exactly and then using my button foot to do exactly what it's doing here where it just makes a buttonhole for me. It's amazing. After my buttonholes are made, I use my seam ripper to rip through the center of it and then poke my strap through and tie a little knot and oh my gosh I really love this piece my goodness. I keep telling myself that I'm just gonna buy a million button downs and make a million of these pieces from this video. This is no exception. Oh gosh, how cute. These low sides are so good. Even just with this little turtleneck, I should wear this thing all the time in thrift flips. Love the idea of wearing it with like a t-shirt or even a turtleneck and some high boots when it gets a little colder. Kills me. Oh, these knots, how cute. I love it. Those are 
all of the amazing button down thrift flips that I have for you today. Thank you so much for thrift flipping with me. Let me know which one you are dying to have in the comments below and then mark your calendars for July 15th because you could have that exact piece in your closet when they all go on sale. I am so excited. Subscribe to my channel and just always know that you are well loved. Thanks for watching. Bye.